The last model that we will see is the seat latch assembly. So I use this image to describe it. This, the seat latch is this kind of mechanism. So the, the lever that you have here and, and, the, um, and the striker that you have to, to fold the, or to bend the automotive seat. Okay. So we have this um, assembly. So it's uh, different parts mounted on, on the base plate. We have the handle itself the locking cam, the hook, and the striker. And every, uh, well, the, the, let's say the two cam are mounted with a torsion spring with a preload on them. So we calculate the preload with the equations. And you have a friction between, a friction and contact between the two parts. And the idea is to calculate the tension force on the cable because at some point, the tension on the cable will be negative. So since it cannot uh, bear compression, the system will activate. And then this cam will suddenly turn in this direction and the system will uh, be free from the, uh, from the striker. Uh, here just a bit more detail on, on, on this area here. You see those thick lines are the poly curves. So this is a very powerful tool to track the um, like the contact point between two complex uh, surfaces. Like in this case, you can see that we will keep the contact between the two parts and update the reaction force. And also we added a friction component to this normal force. So we have this tool here to do this. So it will add a perpendicular force to the normal force and a coefficient, um, a friction of coefficient that you will have here to enter in in inventive. So as I said, the idea is to find the position of the lever at which the system will unlock. But here we are controlling from the uh, angle of the lever. So we will use our notion of back solving. So I will unlock this value and then I will fix a zero value for the uh, force in the, um, in the cable. So from zero degree, I consider that the, the cable cannot sustain the compression, so the system will activate. And now I know that it will happen at 9.26 degree. So it looks like a very precise information, and that's what you will have if you only consider the nominal values. But if you um, take into account all the dispersion of all of the parameters that will have an impact on this angle, so you will see that the system can unlock um, somewhere between minus 3 and 22 degrees at the worst case. So even at its rest position, the system can activate. And this is based on a real uh, problem that one of our customers had. And they realized this quite late in the process because they were confident that their analysis gave them a value. But then they started building uh, prototypes and, and, and the system uh, didn't work. So with Adventive, we can see that this is due to the uh, dispersion of uh, some, uh, con some contributors. Here you have the friction force, the length of the cable, uh, the, the profile tolerance on all the parts and so on. And if you do the exercise of tightening uh, the, the dispersion of those parameters, you will see that you can improve a bit this dispersion, but still you will have a very big range here. So the conclusion was that uh, that was a conception problem and then they had to go back to the basic shape of, of the cam and, and uh, find another uh, shape here because this problem has an unstable equilibrium point. So if you identify that early enough, you will be able to save all the money you spend on the prototype and, and, and so on. So that's why we um, think that inventive should be used um, in early stage of the design process. That's where you will be able to save a lot of money by identifying there the problems related to NGT and D.